If you've ever seen the movie 300, you know that the depicted fighting strategy of the ancient Spartans depended heavily on working together as an intact, cohesive unit. The frontline warriors positioned themselves tightly, side by side, and that way it was incredibly difficult for invaders to break through and defeat them. But a breach in the front line meant the entire army could be vulnerable to danger. Why am I referencing 300? Because our health and well-being are greatly impacted by a similar one-cell thick layer of cells in the small intestines called epithelial cells. These epithelial cells operate very similarly to the warriors of 300. They are directly exposed to substances from the outside world, such as food, drinks, medications, other toxins, etc. And their structural integrity can determine our health and how we feel. We want them to maintain a very tight junction with adjacent cells. Note, these cells do allow for the selective passage of some molecules such as water and other nutrients, but in general, they, we do not want them to let other things through. If gaps do develop in between these cells, or the one cell thick epithelial layer becomes damaged, what is known as intestinal permeability may result. Okay, so what are the causes of intestinal permeability? Uh, first, we have to understand that most times intestinal permeability happens, it has to do with some type of immune or inflammatory response. Besides the epithelial cells, there's also different types of specialized cells in the lining or directly below the lining of epithelial cells that have to assess all of the food and substances that we're eating and they have to determine if we're going to respond to them or if we're gonna tolerate them. And for the most part, if the immune system does choose to respond to something, in order to actually access it and get through, because there's a barrier of epithelial cells in the way, even if it's one cell thick, they actually have to space apart the cells in order to pass through, in order to engage the quote, uh, foreign invader type substance. So think about that uh, as if you look at the image previously, think about that and that kind of explains and puts into perspective why this sometimes happens. So some of the reasons why we'll get intestinal permeability, uh, I've talked about this a lot before, uh, processed foods, uh, toxins, chemicals, and even maldigested food, which is food particles that are perhaps too large and the immune system isn't used to seeing a molecule that big and doesn't know what it is. Basically all it is is if the immune system doesn't recognize it, such as some chemical that could be in a food, uh, there's a higher chance that they're gonna respond to it. Uh, certain diseases like celiac disease, if the person has gluten, they actually cause a destruction of the villi, which are tiny projections on the top of the epithelial cells. Uh, if you click back a little bit, you'll actually see them. Uh, most of the absorption of food and nutrients actually takes place here, and they're there to add surface area to these cells in order to do that job more appropriately. Uh, but in celiac disease, if the person has gluten, those villi and the actual whole epithelial cells can become destroyed. And even if you don't have celiac disease, uh, there's a, a protein that comes from gluten called zonulin, which is known to space apart the epithelial cells and cause the epithelial, uh, excuse me, cause the intestinal permeability all by itself. Besides that, uh, having lower ineffective digestive secretions, which include bile, stomach acid, and digestive enzymes comes into play. This kind of ties back to a lot of different reasons, uh, such as a hypothyroid, eating while stressed, which lowers stomach acid, uh, drinking too much fluids, which dilutes the stomach acid, and just in general, intestinal permeability can decrease digestive enzyme secretion, which also occurs in the small intestine lining. Besides that, there's having insufficient vitamin D, which predisposes people just to be more reactive in terms of immune system and more inflammatory response if you're low or suboptimal in vitamin D. Uh, it's usually recommended to be optimally in the 40 to 60 range of vitamin D per the scale. And then the medications such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or NSAIDs, uh, oral corticosteroids, SSR, SSRIs, which are depression and anxiety medications, and antibiotics can also play a role in different ways in causing intestinal permeability. Uh, finally, uh, SIBO and uh, dysbiosis or some sort of microbial overgrowth can also cause the immune system to react. And finally, what are the results of intestinal permeability? Uh, they're usually all 
bad. Uh, first and foremost, there's digestion and absorption issues of nutrients. You're going to have fewer digestive secretions, digestive enzymes if you have intestinal permeability and absorbing food, as mentioned. Uh, the villi and the cells themselves, they can be compromised or damaged, which would result in fewer absorbed nutrients. And this would impact infinite number of things in your body and your health. Besides that, um, more commonly, uh, bloating, gas, belching, heartburn symptoms, uh, constipation, diarrhea, or both can result uh, just due to the disease going on in your gut. Um, going into mental health as well now. So this is more of an interesting point, I think. Uh, serotonin and dopamine are significantly re reduced if you have intestinal permeability. So about 90% of our serotonin is actually produced not in the brain, but actually in our gut, as well as 50% of the dopamine is also produced there. So just on this, you can tell how big of an impact having a healthy gut and intestinal lining is to your potential mental health. And another point to consider, our gut is sometimes called the second brain, which I don't think most people are aware of the importance of it in terms of its ability to transmit information to the brain. There's actually more information and signals transferred afferently, which is from the gut to the brain, than efferently from the brain to the gut. So the brain is quite literally assessing the situation of the gut and it's our, our thoughts, uh, feelings, emotions can be quite literally dictated by what's going on in the gut, not by what's going on in our brain. And then finally, autoimmune disease is another popular result, unfortunately, from in, uh, increased intestinal permeability. Uh, as I mentioned, the immune cells do lie directly beneath that one cell lining and the epithelial layer. So if there is uh, something like that, dynamic like that going on, a more inappropriately high immune response is far more likely to happen, such as uh, causing autoimmune symptoms. Uh, let me know if you guys had any questions. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this video. If there's anything else I can elaborate or go into further, uh, please drop a comment. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe.